Hello, everybody. Sean Henderson Pierre back again. Another beer ramble edition. And today we're looking at Dale's Pale Ale. Introduced in 2002, the flagship beer of Oscar Blues Brewery, based in Longmont, Cal uh, Colorado. Also, they have a brewery in Brevard, or Brivard, forgive me for the pronunciation, North Carolina, and Austin, Texas. 6.5 ABV. It gets a very good score on Beer Advocate. Um, very good score on the Beer Advocate. Good by the Alston Brothers, or the Bros. Um, it gets a 97 overall score on beer, uh, excuse me, on rate beer, 98 for the, 99, excuse me, for the style. Um, so highly regarded as, as you can see by my brewery, one of probably one more hoppier beers. As you can see, a nice little color right there on the side, nice head. Nice little, a little cloudy, but just good enough. So, onto the scent. Extreme. Definitely has those hop aromas you can smell immediately in this in this beer. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely has some of that. Brewed with hefty amounts of European malts and four kinds of American hops, it delivers a blast of hop aromas and a rich middle of malt and hops. A filling finish. You know, definitely has some of those scents and then some. 6.5, you know this is going to be a really good American Pale Ale style. Mm. So, on to the drink. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the difference between these and IPAs, I think if it's obvious, if you haven't, you know, I think people can realize that immediately is that when you drink an IPA, you know, you'll have a little bit of more citrus infused in, in those, in, in, that, in those IPAs compared to a American pale ale, IPAs, India pale ale, if you don't know what that means, stands, but, um, this definitely has a lot of that and it's very multi, so. Um, I had this beer back in, the first time I had this was 2013. Um, there was you know, a guy who, who was, you know, he had these singles, sig singles available. Um, they were only about maybe a dollar 27 in a can. I know for a 12 ounce can, it's pretty high, but at the time, you know, hey, why not, right? Hmm? Sure, why not? So, a dollar twenty-seven, and now I bought this can for about went up maybe about a dollar eighty-nine. I bought the can at a where oh, I bought this can at. I think I bought this can at uh, Whole Foods in Mobile. Excuse me, dollar ninety-nine. I should say. Bought this can at Whole Foods, so I was uh, in Mobile, and I was kind of uh, said, you know, I've. It wasn't pretty much, uh, I think the 12 pack, six pack of this goes for about $8.99 or $9.99 for the price. But so this is solid, very hop aroma, extremely hmm. 
very pun very punchy, very hoporamic, and for me for this one, um, this isn't this is really really good. And at the time when I had it, you know, I wasn't really concerned about all the the techno and a lot and all that. You know, just a guy said, you know, like many of us, when you buy beer. You don't give a shit about the style, the texture, and all that other stuff. It's like, hey, man, as long as the son of a bitch is cold, I'm drinking it. Screw it, you know? So that was kind of my view and belief and at times. But as I've gotten to be more educated about some of these things now, those things take into consideration. So, and... Um, you know, it definitely has now you know styles and textures and what they taste like versus this and that. But um, again, very multi, very extremely hoppy. I mean, it is, and it doesn't have a really bitterness end when you go down to it. I think it goes down pretty well smooth. It, it is. I'm sure if you, for someone who's not a beer aficionado, will say, you know, hmm, come, we'll give them this, and you'll give them, say, uh, let's just say a Ranger by New Belgium IPA or something like that. You say, you know, hmm, what's the difference between these two? Hmm, not much difference. And you will realize that at, at that time, so. And, um. But there is a big difference, you know, IPA is a little more tart versus a, a pale ale. So, um, about the brewery, uh, started in 1997 in Lyons, Colorado. Uh, they, um, two years later, 1999, the owner, Dale uh, Ketches, if I forgive me for pronoun mispronouncing his name, uh, decided to go ahead and do a brew the beer in the basement of that restaurant. And so uh, that started that. And uh, about 2002, by then, they were selling beer within that time, 98, I mean, excuse me, uh, 2000, 2001. About 2002, they began pushing their beers out to the public, and they were one of the first craft breweries to have their beer in a can. As we all know, a lot of the major craft breweries were putting their beers in all in um, um, in bottles, green bottles or whatever, blue bottles, you know, clear bottles, whatever. And the thing has always been with bottles versus cans is that the light doesn't get into the beer and you know, where it will kind of hurt the texture and the color and the look of the beer. Not the texture, but sort of the flavor of the beer versus having a can. When you know it's in a can, it's stored securely. No light will come in to affect the taste or or whatever. More so the taste of the beer. So, uh, me personally, again, going back to what I said earlier, you know, as long as the son of a bitch is cold, who cares? But in a way, maybe that does play a role in what you're drinking. That when you buy cans versus buying a bottle, you know you're going to get stuff ice cold in, in a can. And that the flavors will still be in there versus, you know, in, in a bottle. And I know for those who buy beer in a green, and that they're put in a green bottle, whether it be Heineken, whether it be Pilsner or Kell, Lucky Buddha, whatever that may be. Uh, sometimes the flavor will lose itself or maybe the beer might become a bit skunky. So uh, that can can happen. But um, of course, they do a couple of other beers uh, that the brewery puts out. Uh, the Scotch Ale, which is good, and I will do a review of it soon when I get it. And of course... To me, the probably one of the best, if not the greatest, imperial style I've had, and that is the 1050, um, which is I think at 10 point something percent, 10.5 percent, and which is awesome. 
Um, if you ever had that, just really, you're, you're getting your money's worth. And it's, it ain't cheap. You know, if you buy a four pack of it, that is that pretty high. But it'd be perfect the time if you're going to once the weather gets a little bit cooler. As of right now, it's still a little bit warm here in early, early mid September right now, but still one of the best Imperial Stouts out there. So, um, but anyway, uh, back to the spear. Um, paired this with, I would say, anything poultry. Probably the best thing to pair this thing with. Um, a nice... Anything spicy or poultry would probably be good with in general for an AP an American Pale Ale. They always say a salad, but you know I I don't think so. Um, you know, you know I I just don't think it, it's it's that um, uh, to me. You know, try to finish up setting something a, a message. I'm doing this video. I'm doing on this computer, and I got another computer, my significant other's computer. I'm using right now, but uh, something poultry. But I would say anything grilled or rotisserie would probably be good with this. You know, a nice salad or something. You know, that 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 would pair well with this. You know, a nice strong cheese. You know. No, don't do that. Ugh. Anyway, just gave me someone just messaging right now. Um, yeah, a nice, you know, poultry, a strong cheese, Parmesan, Fontana, Fontana cheese, something within that range would probably go well with this beer. So, but um, th this is an excellent beer, and um, I'm I'm gonna go about eight and a half on this one. So that would be probably a B plus if my grades are accurate on that one. So definitely B plus close to an A on this. So nothing wrong with this. This is something that I would say to everyone, please go ahead and get and try. If you're looking for something that's the perfect pale ale, this would be it. So anyhow, if you've had Dale's Pale Ale, deserves an A or an eight and a half score or less, leave your comments on the bottom. John and Sapir, the Bill Ramilton. Keep on watching. And as always, cheers.